this uh, question. Let's now talk about the next question here. Okay, a typical question. Find the equation of a plane passing through A, B, and C. Also find a unit vector perpendicular to this plane. A very stereotypical question. Okay. You must know how to solve these because much more difficult questions will be framed using these simpler concepts. You can again type the answer privately to me or send me a WhatsApp. Sir, I've sent it to you. Yeah, yeah. Can you send me something like an equation? It doesn't look like an equation. <laughs> yes, Ardara is absolutely correct. Uh, Aditya, do send me a Cartesian equation. Sir, is it 1 by root 38 of 5i cap plus 2j plus 3k? Equal to something, right? Or plus something equal to 0. Equation means something has to be equal to, right? So that is n vector like that. You you have you have mentioned the equation of the unit vector, right? Yes, sir. Oh, well, yeah. Unit vector is correct. I want the equation first. Uh, and and that too also there is a small mistake, Aditya, in the sign of k that you have written. Okay. Just check. Yes, sir. So there are two parts to the question. One is the equation of the plane and other is the unit vector perpendicular to this. So if you get one, uh, I think the second one will be easier to find out. Yes, I'll send the equation. Sir, I had sent it to you. Yes, yes. That's correct, Shreya. Absolutely correct. Aditya, also correct. Just write 5x and 2y. Okay, now let's discuss this very simple question. Uh, let's do this in uh, Cartesian form. Now remember when you have been given three points on the plane. Let's say A, three non-collinear points first of all, because when you have a collinear point, there can be infinitely many planes passing through it. But when you have three non-collinear points, you can only have a unique plane passing through it. So let's say x1 has coordinate, uh, a, a has coordinate x1, y1, z1, b has coordinates x2, y2, z2, and c has coordinates x3, y3, z3. I had already discussed with you that we use the concept of coplanarity, correct? Coplanarity, whenever the word comes, scalar triple product must appear in our mind. And when you, when you talk about scalar triple product, we talk about coplanarity of three vectors. So I'll take another point, let's say r, x, y, z. Okay, and I claim to say that this vector, this vector, and this vector. So basically, I'm saying um, AR vector, AC vector, AB vector, they are coplanar. Correct? That means the IJK components of these vectors written in determinant form should be zero. So, what is the IJK component of uh, AR vector? X minus X1 y minus y1 z minus z1 what is the xyz component of ac vector x3 minus x1 you can you can write a2 for ab first but it doesn't really matter you can write in any one of the rows any one of them because ultimately you are equating it to zero so let me write ab first just to maintain an order of one two three so y2 minus y1 z2 minus z1 z x3 minus x1 y3 minus y1 and z3 minus z1. Now let me tell you, it doesn't really matter which three vectors you are taking and writing their STP as zero. You could have taken BC vector also, you could have taken AB vector also, you could have taken RA vector also, but R must be there else your equation will not be there. Okay. So take, you know, any three vectors formed by these four non-collinear points. In fact, four coplanar points to be more precise. So when you write, when you uh, use this in our given problem, so let's take our uh, x1, y1, z1 to be our point C because it looks uh, simpler of all. x minus 7, y minus 0, z minus 6. And take the difference of any two points you want. Doesn't really matter. So let's say I take the difference of AB. So I get a 1, I get a 2, I get a 3. Then I take the difference of BC, let's say. So I get a 4, I get a minus 4, and I get a 4 again. Okay, equated to zero. Okay. 
just drop the factor of 4 throughout just to save our time. So I'll make it as 1 minus 1 and 1. 1 minus 1 and 1. And let me expand it. So it's x minus 7 times uh, 2 plus 3, which is 5, minus y times uh, 1 minus 3, which is minus 2, and z minus 6 times uh, minus 3 equal to 0. So if you expand it, you get 5x plus 2y minus 3z. And constants will be minus 35, minus 35 plus 18, which is minus 17 equal to 0. That becomes your answer of the question. Okay. If you want to write it in the vector form, you can write it as r dot 5i plus 2j minus 3k is equal to 17 or minus 17 equal to 0. So this is the vector form. Okay. Now they're asking a unit vector along the normal. Just take uh, this vector and divide it by the magnitude of this vector, which is under root 25 plus 4 plus 9. That's 5i plus 2j minus 3k over root 38. Over root 38. Make sense? Okay. Now, a very interesting thing that we can also discuss when we are talking about uh, equation of a plane passing through three points. So let's say, I have these three points A, B and C. Okay, these are my three non-collinear points. Okay, now when I say these three points form a plane, that means they are coplanar, correct? So can I say any, let's say I take any generic point R, can I say R minus A vector is coplanar to, is coplanar to, is coplanar to, uh, let's say B minus A and C minus A vector, correct? Now you could have written that also in another form without STP. That is, you could have written R minus A vector as X times B minus A plus Y times C minus A. Remember our uh, first discussion on coplanarity of points was based on expressing uh, a vector, let's say A, B, C are three vectors which are coplanar. Then one can be expressed as a scalar combination or as a linear combination of the other two. So this vector okay, is coplanar to this and this. So it could be expressed as a linear combination of other two. So X and Y here are some scalar quantities. Do you remember this? All of you remember this? Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So there's another way that you can actually represent the equation of a plane, which is part, which is uh, having a point A, B, C on it is A plus X, B minus A plus y c minus a okay when you group up your a together you get a uh, 1 minus x plus sorry 1 minus x minus y plus uh, x b plus y c okay is that fine correct now you could also i you know uh, choose to uh, do away with one of the constants. You can choose your uh, one of the constants as a uh, one and make this as a plus some lambda b plus some mu c. Are you getting it? Okay, so this is another form of the equation of a plane, but this is very less used. I mean, you will not see this in at least your uh, uh, NCRT books. Okay. In some international books, yes, they talk about it, but you will not find them in your NCRT book. Are you getting my point? So you could also write down the equation of a plane passing through three points in this form. This is called, by the way, a parametric form because lambda and mu are parameters over here. Because as lambda and mu change, then only you get different, different points on the plane. Are you getting it? So if I give you an equation, which is in this form, will you be able to write a Cartesian form for it? Let's take a question on this. So there's an equation of a plane given like this. Following plane, it should be not planes. In Cartesian form. 
So basically they have given you a equation in this form. R is equal to A plus lambda B plus mu C. So it's just another way of saying that R I minus J I plus J plus K and I minus 2J plus 3K, these are coplanar points. So these are coplanar points. So it's just another way of saying it. That means they all lie on a plane. Please uh, reply privately to me once you're done. Oh, uh, no, Shreya. Oh, well, you may be correct also. By the way, yeah, let me write it like this. R minus this. So send it to you, sir. Send it to me? Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> so R minus A vector is coplanar to B and C. That's what I'm trying to say. So R minus A, when you write it, you can write it as, you know, X I plus Y J plus Z K minus I minus I plus J minus I. Okay, just so you open the bracket, it will become plus j. So it becomes x minus 1i, y minus 1j, and zk. Correct? So this will come in your first row. So x minus 1, y minus 1, z will come in the first row. The other two vectors, b and c vectors, will come in the second row. 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 2, 3. Okay? Getting the point? So when you expand this, it becomes X minus one, uh, three plus two, which is five minus Y minus one, which is three minus one, which is two and Z times minus three equal to zero. When you expand it, you get five X minus two Y minus three Z and you get a minus five uh, and you get a plus two and a minus three equal to zero. Is that fine? Everything is okay so far? No, th sorry, there is no. So, no. won't it be y plus y one? Plus one. Y plus one. Plus y plus, ah, yes, 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 yes. This is y plus one. I'm so sorry. Yeah, y plus one. Plus one. So, it will become a minus two here. This will not be there. This is minus two. So if you expand it, it becomes this. Okay. Now, whenever you are in confusion, there's another way to deal with it. You can just write it as XI plus YJ plus ZK and compare both the sides. See another way of doing it, but probably a slightly lengthier way to do it. So I've been given that R is equal to I minus J plus Lambda times I plus J plus K plus mu times i minus 2j plus 3k. Okay. So what I'll do is first, I will write my r as xi plus yj plus zk. Okay. And I'll compare and I'll compare my i coefficients, j coefficients and k coefficients on both the sides. So x is equal to 1 plus lambda plus mu. y is equal to minus 1 plus lambda minus 2 mu. And Z is equal to uh, lambda plus 3 mu. Now from here, I have to eliminate my lambda and mu. So what I'll do is I'll take any two of the equations. Let me take the first two, not first two, first and the last. Okay, so let me subtract it first. So when I subtract X minus Z is equal to one minus two lambda. Sorry, two mu, correct? So mu is nothing but uh, one minus X minus Z by two. Okay, uh, put it in the last one. So lambda is going to be Z minus three mu. Mu is one minus X minus Z by two. Okay, so once you know these two values, put it in the third, uh, second equation. So Y is equal to minus one plus lambda. Lambda is going to be Z minus three by two, one minus X minus Z. 
minus 2 mu. So minus 2 mu will be just uh, minus 1 minus x minus n. Okay. And just uh, you know, simplify this further. So if you open the bracket, it becomes y is equal to minus 1 plus z minus 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2 x plus 3 by 2 z minus 1 plus x plus z. Okay. So minus 1 minus 1 will become uh, so y is equal to minus 2 minus 2. Uh, just correct me if I have missed out on anything. This will become z will become 5z by 2 plus z. Sir, uh, minus 3 by 2 and it's 3 by 2 x. So they won't cancel. Oh, uh, my mistake. My mistake. So I'm uh, sorry. I didn't see that x. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, minus 2 and minus, uh, minus 2 and plus 3 by 2 I have, right? No, minus minus everywhere. So it's minus 7 by 2. So this is going to be minus 7 by 2. So let me just remove the constants from everywhere. Hmm. And z term would be uh, 5z by 2 plus, plus 2. So 7z by 2. 7z by 2. So z, z gone. And one more z is there. Okay. And you have 3 by 2x and y is on the other side. So uh, multiply with the 2 and bring the uh, y on the other side. So it becomes 3x minus 2y plus uh, 3z. Why am I getting 7z? Mm -mm. 2z, 5z. Just check if the values are correct. X plus lambda plus mu. That's correct. So y is equal to minus 1 plus lambda minus 2 mu. That's also correct. Z is uh, k lambda plus 3 mu. That's also correct. And if you subtract, it becomes 1 minus 2 mu. So, oh, oh, there's a small mistake here. It's a plus here. So this will also become a plus. So we understood the method. Understood the method, right? So uh, just just try it out uh, this method also. You should get the very same answer. Okay. So I'm not wasting time doing it. Okay. Is this clear? So all you need to understand is when you have been given uh, such a scenario, it's as good as saying R minus A vector is coplanar to is coplanar to vector B and C. Okay, so this is another way of expressing R minus A B C S T P is equal to zero. So this is equivalent to saying R is equal to A plus lambda B plus mu C. So don't be surprised when you see such an equation given to you. Don't misunderstand this as an equation of a line because it resembles very much like an equation of a line. If just this mu c has not had not been there, it would have resembled an equation of a line only. Is the idea clear how this works? Yes, and this is, this is not there in your uh, NCRT. Okay. Now let us take few mix and match of these concepts that we have learned through problems. 